Hi, good afternoon. This is the Democratic Alliance Weekly Labour Report. This is Sunday, the 29th of August, 2021. Uh, thank you for listening to me and thank you for tuning in to this report. Uh, like per normal, if you like it, if you feel it's got of any value, please send it on to family, friends, associates, um, other businesses. I'd really appreciate that. Um, also, just to let you know that we're not going to have this weekly report for the next three weeks. So please excuse me. We're taking a short break from the Labour report. But if anything urgent comes up, obviously I will speak about it. So this is the Democratic Alliance Labour report, Sunday, the 29th of August, 2021. We've got three interesting things to talk about today. The most important being um, the... Minister of Labour, Employment and Labour, suspending people on full pay. Um, and we'll talk about that because it's going across government that people are suspended on full pay um, and very seldom actually face disciplinary inquiries. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is a, um, a very interesting thing where a disciplinary inquiry was set up by a minister, uh, Minister Sisulu, um, and then we found out that, in fact, it wasn't a proper disciplinary inquiry. It was some sort of panel that was put together. And then we had Machunu uh, coming in after Sisulu and saying this was a lot of nonsense. So that's an interesting one, which follows on from people are being suspended. And then finally, we've got a very interesting thing, which I've been reading about and trying to get the bottom of. And that is Nedlack. Nedlack um, have been debating for almost five years some... Um, changes to the National Social Security Plan and then government goes ahead and puts together a green paper and ignores completely what Ned Lack has suggested at enormous cost, five years worth of negotiation at Ned Lack, which is all government money, it comes via the Department of Employment and Labour. So thank you once again for tuning in, it's Michael Bagram, I'm the Democratic Alliance Labour spokesperson and we've got some interesting things to chat about today. So we'll get straight on to it. Um, one understands that when you have a possible allegation or there's been some issue with staff in any business place, in any environment where staff are employed, and you feel that you need to investigate this, normally what is done is that staff member is suspended on full pay, on full benefits, and you then quickly follow through with your investigation and you appoint a disciplinary chairperson or a panel and you go ahead with that discipline. Now in the private sector, um, quite categorically, you do that quickly because you're paying the staff for their time. So if you're going to spend two or three months, you're wasting two or three months worth of salary because they're not working, first of all, they're suspended on full pay. And second of all, justice delayed is justice denied. We, we know that, and that is a common refrain uh, from staff and from employer. But of course, it's vastly different when you're in government. Government somehow doesn't worry about money. The taxpayer will fork out, there's no issue there. Uh, there's lots of it, so you can keep pushing the taxpayer to pay higher and higher tax, and that you can keep people on suspension, on full pay, while you twiddle your thumbs while Rome burns. Now, we've seen this over the years. Over the past 20 years, we have thousands of civil servants who get suspended on full pay and wait and wait for their disciplinary inquiries. Whether they're guilty or not, that's irrelevant. Somehow, the very expensive, the very well-paid, well-heeled human resource departments in each Department of Government somehow don't get it together. Um, a few years back, a, a lady had phoned me and said that she was a school teacher uh, employed by the National Department and she had been suspended. Um, this was a lady in Johannesburg. She had been suspended on full pay after she had got involved in a physical fight with another teacher. Two women had got involved in a physical fight. She was suspended and she wanted to know. Uh, whether she could um, go and take another job and resign and what, what would be the consequences. So I said, yes, of course, what you can do is you can resign and go and get the other job. And I said, but just as a matter of interest, when were you suspended? And she said, three years previously. Now just swallow that. 
For three years, she had been on suspension on full pay with all the benefits and even accruing leave during that time. I mean, it's, it's bizarre that the mind goes. And also she had got the increases that they were entitled to do and she got a bonus. So, so there you have it. Of course, what she did do, um, she resigned, took the other job and thanked me very much for that wonderful advice that I've given. I'm not so sure why she resigned because she could have carried on getting her salary in any event um, for the next three years thereafter. And I don't know if a disciplinary hearing would ever have been held. And now what we have is a situation where the former Minister of Water and Sanitation had set up a committee disguised as a disciplinary uh, panel. Um, there was no, um, I don't know, there wasn't any independent individual to chair this. And when the minister went to go and check the new minister after Minister Sisulu, went to go and check and found this was not an independent, this was just a panel of people who were investigating. So in fact, there wasn't ever going to be a disciplinary inquiry and these people were on suspension, on full pay, uh, and there you have it. I mean, it, it just would have carried on forever. And I have a suspicion that we experience this throughout government. I have a suspicion that somehow no one takes anything seriously. Um, it, as a... Uh, uh, former head of the DA, Helen Ziller, used to say, there's no consequence management at all. No consequence management for someone that does anything wrong. In fact, the consequence is you can stay at home and get your salary and live life happily ever after. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I must just add that here in the Western province, when disciplinary hearings are to take place, they take place quickly, they take place efficiently, and we get the results quickly as well. Uh, maybe not as quick as the uh, private sector, but at least we're not waiting years for people to have disciplinary inquiries. So it's very interesting, uh, very interesting that, and we've got still literally thousands and thousands of civil service people who are on suspension waiting. Can you imagine the situation? I've spoken to one fellow about this. He doesn't feel he's done anything wrong. He doesn't think he's guilty and he's sitting and waiting. He's been waiting for seven months for his inquiry. He's been writing and asking for reports uh, as to what's happening. Uh, he's not getting any answers. And of course, this is a typical textbook case of justice delayed is justice denied. Um, well, now we've got a, a situation where these plans um, often go to NEDLAC. Now, NEDLAC is the... Um, debating chamber set up by the Department of Employment and Labour. It's an interesting concept and was set up by uh, initially by President Mandela, uh, where business, big business, labour and government would sit in a tripartite alliance. They do have some representatives from civil society, but they sit together and they debate, especially labour legislation or plans as to how to handle future legislation and how to actually get some benefit out of future legislation. Uh, we had this with NEDLAC debating the national minimum wage. This was a few years back, I think about six years ago, they started debating a national minimum wage, and it was introduced two and a half to three years ago, it was introduced. And we found that what they debated at NEDLAC, and I raised this point with the Minister of Employment and Labour, somehow got ignored and they went ahead and made their own uh, figure up what they were going to use at um, the on the green paper in parliament and as to introduce it without any recourse or any understanding of what was actually discussed at nedlac and now we've just seen this again it's, it's unbelievable and here and i'm reading from it there was a final report after five years of debate. Now you can imagine what this cost, where you've got parties from all over the country representing big business, representing government and the trade unions. They're all getting together, they're debating, and they debate for five years, and that gets completely ignored. So much so that in Parliament two years back, I called Ned like a toy telephone because somehow they're talking into a phone, but no one's listening. There's no one there on the other side. Now we're spending millions on this. We've spent a billion rand over those past five years. On what? 
Uh, I don't know, maybe it was lots of fun going into those negotiations and debating, but somehow government ignores it. And so I, my special plea today to the Minister of Employment and Labour is, if we've got this body, it's a fantastic body, Ned Lack. They're good people there. They are people that take into account what government needs, what the country needs, what the trade unions need, business needs. Those people are not unintelligent and they're coming to agreements. And then you go into the minister and he then pretends that it's not there. My plea is, Minister, please read what Ned Lack has to say. You don't have to follow, but please take it into account before you legislate. So thank you very much once again. It's Michael Bagram. I'm the Democratic Alliance Labour spokesperson, Sunday the 29th of August 21. And we will hear from me again in mid-September. Thank you very much.